Okay, so one of the things that I wanted to show today, I'm working on a suit, uh, a suit, working on a suit, working on a seat for Luciano, and here's what we did so far. This is the seat cover that came with it, and obviously uh, it's in rough shape. The, uh, the seat cover Luciano wanted was more like a stock bike, which I guess anybody that's restoring an old bike, one of the things that always takes a beating is the cover. And this one, I maybe he'll want to save this to, uh, I don't know. I'm not going to comment. <laughs> not, it's not for me to say. But anyway, what we've done this many, many, many times. There's a lot of do's and don'ts about recovering a seat cover. The first one is the material. You can buy this material in any vinyl store. There's two places within 10 miles of my house. It, the difference is it has to be vinyl that stretches. See, it has a stretch in it. If you, if you have vinyl that doesn't stretch, you can't really go around corners and edges conveniently. To, to get this on and to take, and actually this is a piece of Luciano Supply, this, is, this was a lot bigger. I always just cut it oversized by way more than I need. Once I have it stapled in place, and, and the deal is to just get it to staple around and not even think about wrinkles. And what I wanted to show is the part of this job that's difficult or challenging, as the case may be, is that you want to get all the wrinkles out. So as an example, the first time you do this, you wind up in a corner and you say, ooh, that, you, you can't get that wrinkle out. Well, so what I thought I'd do is show some of the ways, and these are certainly I'm not a professional upholsterer, I only know enough to be able to do this on these bikes that we restore and for obviously friends and family and whatever. But the biggest trick of doing this is to get an arrow stapler. I don't know if this really means it's heavy duty, but I just happen to have this one. And the staples that you use, now I used to use quarter inch staples, they say heavy duty. Well for this seat, quarter inch staples aren't going to work because it's such a, it's so difficult to get down around in the corners that I've, I've gone to, woo, to having longer staples. These are, I don't know if they're even three eighths or what, three eighths. Okay, so, but the longer staples, they'll allow me, if I can't get the gun to go right in on a perfect angle, see like right here, this is going to keep it, that, so I'm going to have to go on both sides of it. So sometimes you have to be a little creative about that, but a lot of people that have never done this before, and by the way, we've done a lot of upholstery for houses and antique houses and chairs and different things, That, but it's always the difficult part, the part that needs a little, most people that are starting this need a little, like how to do it, is to get the wrinkles out. And so I thought I'd use Luciano's seat, since it's a rainy day and we're here basically, uh, trying to get this to look like a stock seat, I guess. But number one, there's always, no matter how tight you do this, there's always a few little wrinkles. Now, the, the thing to always do is have a heat gun. And I'll show the different, some of the different ways I've used, but certainly these are not the only ways. There's a lot of ways to do this. This is one way that I think everybody that restores motorcycles has a heat gun. You could warm it to the touch. If you keep doing this long enough, you'll eventually burn a hole in it, so we don't want to do that. Then it'll stay that way probably for a minute or so. Then the first thing is to pull out all the old staples. And what I'm doing, if you watch how this goes, you probably think, wow, that's pretty easy, and it is. So I want to start pretty much in the middle. I want to put some tension on it. And by the way, it's always good to do this the day after you get a manicure, because if you have a long fingernail, that's why I like the long staples, it, it tends to get in the way. Now I'm pulling this up, the heat is allowing me to stretch it, and I'm just retacking it. And there's no reason not to do this, and because if you do it and you don't like the way it looks or you want to make it red or purple, you just go buy another piece of vinyl. The vinyl's about eight to ten bucks, at least in the stores in Bergen County here. 
Now we got one where that wrinkle is, is where I want to just heat it a little more. And we've got pretty much, now we're not going to get the last little bit out because the edge of this seat is not in perfect condition. It was in pretty rough shape. So once I get to that point, then I, I feel I can get in there with a pair of scissors, trim some of that off. I don't need to trim everything, but the longer you leave it, the more prone it's going to be to wrinkling. So the idea is to leave about an inch right up to the very end, leave enough, but don't leave extra. That's the whole secret I've learned. Secret, I don't know if it's a secret. Anyway, I thought I'd leave this one because this would be a problem. No matter how you do this, it's going to leave that wrinkle. But again, the trick is not a real, not a real high-tech thing. I'm sure that even out on YouTube there's more definitive videos than this. But it's nice if you're restoring a bike. And I know they make these seat covers with stitching in them and all kind of cool stuff, but the majority of people I know just want to have it look pretty much like what a stock bike would look like. Now, you look at where the wrinkle is, and you want to get the staple right in the middle. So you pull it to both sides, try to pull it equally. Now the wrinkle's moved here, I want to pull it right at the wrinkle, move that around. I want to go to the back here where I see that wrinkle. And by the way, we could have, if Luciano wanted, or anybody wanted, we could add a layer of foam, make the seat a little more comfortable. We could make it a little, which I've done every bike, all eight of the bikes I own are, have custom seats. No stock seats. And I usually get them because the size of my rear end needs extra foam. Anyway. So now I can get rid of some of this. Now I don't want to, I'm going to staple this permanently. These are, everything that's in this seat right now is a temporary staple. Then what I'm going to do at the very end is go around it one section at a time, heat it, pull a little more tension, and put a final staple in. So what I want to do at this point, because this will let it unwrinkle a lot easier when I put heat on it later, get it down to about an inch. And like I said, professional upholsters probably can do this a lot more efficiently, faster. There's probably a thousand extra tricks that I don't have any clue about. But, but what it's allowed me to do is make probably 50 of these seats in the course of the last 20 years. And they all seem to be, well, it's real nice. Now, I, I've got the two backs here. So what I want to do is just temporarily keep this from moving up. Just put a little tension on it. All these staples will eventually come out and be replaced with brand new ones. Now I want to look, ooh, this side's got a wrinkle in it. Well, wherever the wrinkle is, then the real difficult thing is, see, this is going to go down eventually. So I'm going to, over the course of doing this eight, ten times, keep pulling this down like a drum until I get as much of that curve in there. This is very similar to the, the Kawasaki 750 seat that I just did. Of course, I can put all that embroidering on for Luciano if he wanted, but uh, I don't know, I could put Luciano's pizza team or something. You don't have to be in a real rush to do this, but it's you don't want to really take too much time either. So the, the quicker, if I start doing this a little quicker than normal, I want to pull the whole side down now. And they're constantly taking out the original staples, stretching it. Again, we can stretch it this way. There it would need it. And the material stays warm for about a minute. I had thought about if I was going to do a lot of these, or if I was going to open up a business or something, I would get right here, one of those McDonald's heat lamps. So it would keep it, probably would burn your hand too. And this way, sometime having it the lowest tech way possible, Holcomb's razor seems to work the best. That one's out. And this is why I like to have the longer staples now, is to get in here where I can't really get in. Because at the very end, when I put the real staples in that are going to hold this, I'll try to get them up along the edge and make them nice and neat 
so Luciano will, you know, double the price here or whatever. But anyway, that's starting to come out nice. Now it looks like getting up in the front, by the way, is always the most difficult. So to start with doing the front, I want to make sure I don't have way too much material because that's just going to make it harder and harder. It's the, the smaller you can make the material up to about an inch, the better of a chance you have of getting out because you need an inch of material to grip grab with your neat little fingers okay we've got plenty up here and this is where this is going to have to bend around so I'm going to have to heat that so let me just take take what this is as I call this a corner cut now I'll be able to get this side to wrap over I'll get that to wrap over, then the last thing will be the front. So, at this point, what I want to do, and I'm leaving this last curve for the last thing, because I'm going to have to go back several times, and each time I put a little more tension on it. But the reality is, once you're done with this, if, if you live where it's hot and sunny, you put this out in the, on the dashboard of your car, and let the sun will get rid of 90% of these little wrinkles and imperfections. But for right now, this will work. And I think I've, I've made my point here. I hope I have anyway. Now I want to put tension on this, pull it around. I also want to, while I got the material hot, pull that around. we've got now see because this is an old seat and this is a very rough edge here this in time will just take its own set it isn't really like if we had a new seat here but it's certainly it's certainly going to be better than if we didn't do anything okay now this side here I want to stretch I'll turn it this way and the good thing about this is no matter how many times you do this you can always go back and pull the staples out, heat it, stretch it. There's never a time like paint. It's not like if you cut the back off a frame to make a cafe racer and all of a sudden you want the stock seat back. It's a real problem. Okay, now we're coming up on the front of this, which if I look at how this is going to mount, there's a wrinkle right here I want to get out. And I really want to get that out because that's really not looking how I'd like it to look. So you'll heat this whole front section. Now an example is Bob's VFR has a, a seat cover that needs a, a recovering, probably over the winter. I'll try to do a uh, like right from scratch thing, but for right now, the part of it that most people, including myself of course, would like to see the, how to do is to, how to get the wrinkles out. So there's no such thing as putting the staples in and then you're done. You got to put the staples in, take the staples out, after it's heated, put some tension on it, find that wrinkle, pull it from both sides if you can. can get it from here now this part we whoops we probably can do from you have to be on the edge of a table to do this everywhere there's a wrinkle I'm trying to pull on the wrinkle This could use a little more heat here. But let's just get what we can out right now. Because we can trim a lot of that off later. But I don't have the bike in house here, but that's probably going to be just about as nice as possible. This little thing is, of course, there's a piece missing <coughs> in the frame, and I think that'll eventually take its own set, but. What I'll just put a little extra tension on it. Now 
and let's see. Now at the point you're happy that the only problem, that's not a problem, is see this is not following the contour. So what I want to do right now is one by one, I'm going to heat this area. Now another good trick that really that works every time is if we had a sunny day today, we don't of course, if this were a really sunny day, I could go out to the work table that's out behind the house, the sun would heat this just like mounting a tire. But the idea is to keep the vinyl as warm as possible and to have stretch vinyl is just part of the trick. Now this operation I'm doing right now, I'm going to have to probably do eight, ten times to get that as tight as possible. There's a limit of course, I can't make it like a rubber band, but now I want to know where the low spot is. The low spot is right about here. And Whoa, I got, oh, I got a lot of material there. But again, I'm going to be doing this over and over. I won't record this whole thing because it's going to get... Like I always say, I think it's probably boring already. But not if you want to, if you want to see how to do some of these things. And to be honest, I wish years ago when I was doing a lot of this stuff, I wish I would have had the option of having YouTube videos, which, boy, they are good. Now we got, we got 80% of it out already. Okay, now I have to do the same thing on this. And it's a question now of going back and forth, over and over, warm the material. When you think you got it as close as it possibly can be, then I'll put, take one little section at a time and put all brand new staples in it. But I've got this section here, and by the way, what happens when you put this seat out in the sun, even if it's on the motorcycle, it'll, in the course of sitting in the sun for a couple hours, the vinyl just kind of and conforms to the shape. So I'll switch this around. Again, I think you only have to see this. A good friend of mine that George Venturini that taught me how to do a lot of the work around my house, he'd say, you only have to see it once. And he was right. Okay, now I want to find that low spot, which is right about here. See if I can grab this. Oh boy, that's nice. I don't want to let it go. Obviously, if you have a helper here, it's, it makes it a lot easier. But I try to gear everything that I do to working alone. And this is a little defect in the seat here, so I'm not going to make myself crazy over that. I'm sure Lou Channel's not going to want to buy another seat. Oh, we ran out of staples. It can happen. Oh, beautiful. Now that looks like, oh, we've got most of it out. Wow, that's nice. Now, as I stretch this, this piece is developing a wrinkle, but we all know what's going to cause that. I'm going to move these staples back. Uh, again, I don't want to make this a two-hour video, but it's a question of just going back and forth, back and forth. And I will, before the day is over, I will have done that stretch thing several times. And again, I'm looking for the wrinkle. I get my finger underneath, so I'm not pulling just on the edge. There we go. Mm, that's, 
actually coming out pretty good. Now it's these edges because this this has a thing for a strap. Mm, that's what's well, you're not gonna see that anyway. Okay, so now we've got it close enough. I can get rid of a lot of this what I call overage here, which will just make this a neater job. And this part you could do with a razor and we'll be ready to put the final staples in. That's done. So I hope as we've gone along, I hope I've passed on some information that's of of some value. Again, not a difficult job, and you're not, you don't have to worry if you're like you're married to the mob here when you're done. Now all that's left is to one, one section at a time, do the same thing and put in a final row of staples, which I'll do. I'll do one section, but then I'll work my way around the whole seat. Now in this case, there's only a few staples in there, so I can heat this up. And I think it's one of those things that's very true, is you only have to see it once. And we've got a little extra. Now, I don't want to make it so tight that we're going to have rips. Nice. Okay. So now that I know I've got the final piece in there, and I'm happy with it, I'm going to go to the edge of the table. I can push up with the stapler a little bit each time I do this. And if you're using long staples, obviously you want to check you don't have them coming through. You wouldn't want to use like one inch staples. But now there's even more overage I can trim off. In this case, once I get down to nitty gritty here, I can trim the last little bit with a razor because I'm not going to stretch it anymore. I don't want to trim this last little bit. And that's what the final, the final little thing is going to look like. I'll do the rest of the trimming. It's a relatively complex seat shape. Now, the anytime you have a thing, there's a certain amount you can bend this, but then there is a point at which you have to put a seam in it. We have a sewing machine, we have an embroidery machine, but but it's my personal choice to always have it one piece if possible. Just I just like the look of it because it's old school looking. However, you see some of the modern Corbin and all of the aftermarket seats, they got threads going through them and they look real custom and real nice. But, but this is something I think pretty much anybody can do this in about, took me about an hour, maybe a little more than an hour. The money, eight, ten dollars for the vinyl, a couple bucks for the staples. And I'm sure that's something that uh, anybody that's restoring an old bike can you can pretty much use that information. So again, my email address is windyu at AOL. And the website for YouTube is website, whatever you call it, windy space U. You have to put the space in. And thanks for watching, of course.